what I want to know is, what does change mean to you? Change, in its simplest form, refers to the process of becoming different. It can be a deliberate choice, a conscious decision to break free from the chains of the past, but it can also be an unexpected journey thrust upon us by circumstances beyond our control. But do you know that there's not a hair on your head that was there when you were five? There's not a skin pigment or anything back then that you have now, it had all changed. Everything was changed. Three remarkable individuals in Charlotte, North Carolina will share their lives with us and how they navigated the twists and turns of the justice system. I was already guilty of being a habitual felon. I had three felonies between the ages of 18 and 20. I had three count, three felony charges, one for corporate malfeasance and embezzlement and obtaining property by false pretense. I was a college athlete and I went to prison straight from practice. So I, I dealt marijuana, um, which is legal now. Their stories took a different turn as they discovered the transformative power of change through City Startup Lab's Reentry Entrepreneurship Program, also known as REAP. First, we meet Shahida Jackson. After serving 17 years of a 25-year sentence for what was a petty crime, she is finally being released from the Center for Community Transitions in Charlotte. Going out, Naisha. I'm Shahida Jackson. I'm 43 years old. I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and this is my journey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready for her paperwork? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> small summary of 17 years <laughs> like that don't even touch what has transpired mm -hmm. you know my upbringing was tumultuous at best um i have a lot of happy memories but i've learned as i got older that those were force fed as a child genuinely i felt happy it was like i told myself i go stay with all these people because everybody loves shahida like I lived with literally every single family member in my family, which was a lot. My grandma had eight girls. Um, I was in foster homes and group homes from here down to Florida. So it wasn't until I got older that I decided, hey, stop lying to yourself, accept what it was, deal with that, and then maybe you can get better in your mental. So I come back later to pick up yeah, I'll call you when it's, when it's ready. Okay. All right. You are a free woman, man. Oh, is it? Oh, I know. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll take all this with you, okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that paper that right there with your picture on it, uh -huh. you need to prove where you've been all this time. You okay. That, okay. I'll be like, Shh. if you don't believe me, this ain't the story I make up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in prison the past 17 years. Right. <laughs> Prove it. Prove it. Right. Then they ask for what? You're like, all right. $500. $500 worth of groceries and children's clothes. So I ended up having a child when I was 16. I got pregnant again and I had twins 28 days before I turned 18. Well, one of my twins died when they were two days old. And I know for a fact, I lost my mind. Like, I could not deal with that. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say I couldn't. I didn't know how to deal with it. So um, I started getting in a lot of trouble. I was stealing 
um, using credit cards that wasn't mine, whether I bought them or stole them. Like I was just doing stupid stuff, stuff that I knew as I was doing it, like speaking to myself, Shahida, this is stupid. Why are you doing this? And we do it anyway. The way that I explain it to other people is, is like people who get um, hooked on drugs when they experience something traumatic. You know, they do something to make them feel better or forget. And that that's what happened to me. Taisha Lagarde, raised by her beloved grandmother, but caught in a web of circumstances driven by the desire for more. Taisha found herself entangled in the justice system. Hi, my name is Taisha Lagarde. I'm 37 years old. I'm from Johnston County, North Carolina, and this is my journey. This is my partner, and his name is Scott. Scott. <laughs> And Scott wants to be an airplane because he wants to fly and travel everywhere and see everything. And her name is Taisha. She wants to be a rubber band because hmm. she's flexible. Because they're flexible. Because there's, I didn't. <laughs> Get that right. Jesus. Oh, right. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I lived in a mostly single parent household. It was mixed generational where I lived with my grandmother. My mom was there, but she was working two jobs. My dad was always out on the road. He drove cross country and so grandma raised me. I've always done real estate and property management. I started out in apartment community as a leasing consultant and just worked my way up to an accounting position for a property management firm. In real estate, um, there's very specific laws about where money should be, where it shouldn't be, how it's accounted and allocated for, and so you have to make sure every I is dotted. The employer was sending me kickbacks for making her a lot of money. And so it was just rerouting funds. And she wanted to make money, so did I, and so that's just kind of how we got in the situation. We introduce you to Stan Potts. That's my man Stan the man. Um, five words that describe my man Stan is, I don't play that shit. <laughs> With a passion for sports and video games, Stan has harnessed his love for both to create new avenues for success for the young folks he guides and coaches. I'm Stan Potts, and this is my mission. I'm here because uh, I think it's time to kind of get out of my, my shell. Um, I'm a loner. Um, I always kind of do things like um, just my way. I just go get what I want and I just seen a whole lot of resources and I said I want them all. I was raised by every single family member in my family. My parents weren't together. Whichever side that I was with at that month, at that year, I was with. So it was kind of like, Wherever I laid my hat at, that was my home at that time. And my family, they, they really took care of me from my aunts, and my uncles, my grandmas, my grandpa. I was the family baby. They just had to take care of me and put their arms around me. Uh, the next one is don't make assumptions. Wow. Don't make assumptions. Why is that important for us to not, uh, Stanley, to make a uh, Assumptions. If I don't apply, I just let it fly. Like <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, I just let it go. Because I know, I know he ain't talking to me. Like, yeah. like, just, that's how I am. Like, wow. Send it to the spam folder. I yeah. like that. And if it don't fly, let it fly. Yeah. That's let it fly. Don't fly, let it fly. I was a college athlete, and I went to prison straight from practice. So I, I dealt marijuana, um, which is legal now. I kind of started selling drugs at 13 and I didn't really come from a bad home. Like I said, my family, they did the best they can for me. But I made a decision when my back was against the wall to, okay, it's time to start making money for myself and, you know, trying to take some burden off of other people. My charge was for children's clothes and groceries, less than $500.
I was already guilty of being a habitual felon. I had three felonies between the ages of 18 and 20. So what happened, the jury found me not guilty of two charges, but guilty of 10, and then I had the habitual felon. So it was four habitual felon charges, but it equaled up to consecutive eight to 10 year sentences. So I did one eight to 10, and on the day that one ended, I started the next eight to 10. Over the break, um, looking to create that team mantra. We wanna hear what, uh, what you came up with. So these, the words are all ended with the exclamation mark. So it's agitate, motivate, create, change the game. Basically, it's a culmination of our strengths. Um, the one that we all had in common was being a disruptor. So that's where the agitate comes from. Like Frederick Douglass said, agitate, agitate, agitate. You can't create change anywhere unless you agitate. People take that as a negative thing, but it can be a positive if you apply it correctly. I have two counts of obtaining property by false pretense. Initially, I had three count, three felony charges, one for corporate malfeasance, embezzlement, and obtaining property by false pretense. Um, had an attorney get it dropped down to two counts of obtaining property. So I did one and a half. I did the whole minimum, and the max was three. I spent the rest of the time on parole. It was my first time ever. I went straight. I went to prison. So I didn't do any county times. Like, I didn't have any juvenile homes. I was like, my first time out, my time was one and a half to three years. I thought that it was gonna be so difficult, but I have formed friendships from there that I still have to this day. Some of the most loyal people that I think I've come across, um, I spent my prison time with. I had books, I read so much. I would not have had time to read as much if I was out here. Um, but the time that you have just to educate yourself and read and you know reflect and talk to people who are going through some of the th same things you are is just refreshing. Even away from my kids, um, I think they needed it, I needed it, um, just to grow. I see so much growth in myself, so much more opportunity, um, so much more potential. It's just, it was necessary. So in this program, this opportunity that is before you truly is an opportunity for you to get over whatever it is you need to get over to get to that next level. So if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you are absolutely correct. This is the opportunity that you've been waiting for, I'm telling you. As you go through it, this is the place where you want to be. Because nobody is going to deliver, deliver your business like you can. They can give you all the tools. They can help you on your path. But in the end, it's about you. I'm going to give you a problem. I'm giving you the design challenge. Your mission over the next 20 minutes is to come up with an idea to solve this design challenge. The challenge is how might we improve the drive through experience, the fast food drive through experience. Doesn't matter what you do, but you have to make your you have to make your solution. You have to make a prototype code. You have to visually represent it. <laughs> this QR code is a QR code like an easy pass. So it holds whether or not you're a loyal customer, it holds your payment method, so forth and so on. So when you come through the laser whatever reads the QR code, this is it puts you on the conveyor belt, you roll up automatically a holographic menu comes up to your window so you don't have to roll it down if it's raining sunshine whatever the holographic menu comes to your window if you want to order more than what is your regular if you do not you keep on going um and inside the ai machines are connected to the conveyor belt so in real time the conveyor is going to move at the speed that your food is getting made no. uh -huh. so it's connected to the uh new age cooking Whatever. Whatever's inside. Uh, that's that's not our, so, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so. And they go on and they get their food. Bing. And the conveyor lets them off 
and they're going about their business, never having to talk or touch anything nice. or anyone. Except oh, for the conveyor. Also and the conveyor like is a split conveyor. Oh, yes. So oh, the, um, <laughs> the non-members. The non-members, they can the pay thing. however they need to, but basically they're going to be split off. From the rapid, um, yes. why are you discriminating against but me? Because why you no, that's, that's, that's on them. That's on them. So, 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 so here we go. This, this is for customers like you. Yeah, because I'm getting discriminated against. Why did you go fast? You're not being discriminated against. Okay. You're giving. You're being given the opportunity to place your order. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not placing an order. You get to the window and not know what you want. But why happened? should the seven people behind you, if, if it's going to take three minutes for your order, uh -huh. why stop someone else's three minutes because you don't know what you want yet? But what if I looked it up so online on. before I got there? Then you would be in this line and you wouldn't okay. have an argument. Okay, okay. okay. got it. I'm just well, answering. I'm just answering. Stop, stop, stop for time. Stop. stop. <laughs> well done. Right. Well done. <laughs> what we jumped to was people reacting to your right. prototype. There is a process for that, generally, which is capture their reactions, don't respond to them in real time. I was in prison. I wasn't doing nothing with my money but letting it go into a bank account that I wasn't collecting interest off of, the state was. So I said, well, how can I take my money back from the state? Well, one of the ways was that if you are putting your money towards an endeavor for post-release, then you can do that. The business that I have is actually an Italian ice business and it's called Good Portions. So I got my little t-shirt on. I knew that what I wanted to do with my life was to help alleviate some of the stressors of foster care for foster children and teens. I want them to say to these teens that want employment or need employment, we have the perfect place for you because I want us out in the community. I want us facing the people. I don't want to be in a truck behind another wall looking out some at people in a window. I want to be out in the community and I want that for other kids. I know it could be fun. Ed said, you see the robots like uptown, uptown Charlotte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, nobody's working at McDonald's no more. So now we're replacing them with robots. So here mm -hmm. is your experience at the drive-thru. You get a robot. Uh -huh. And he's gonna say all the good stuff to you. It's gonna be AI. But see, the robots is gonna be coming up to each car. So as soon as you talk to the robot and take your order, it's gonna go straight in. So right. by the time you get up to the line, you, you got you. Oh, so have y'all seen the robots up there? Yeah, they're yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. like yeah. they be coming up to you. Yeah, you walking up to them, and they'll just stop. Yeah, yeah. And they'll follow you. Yeah. What do you mean they like? Does she have a good hair do that day? Nice that day. Like she wants a compliment when she's up there. Not nobody on World Star with an attitude talking about, give me your car. She wants them to be really nice, right? <laughs> I love it. But again, the visual representation helps the team think about it, kind of you know, coalesce on their idea, helps us understand it, which we can react to. That's prototyping. I knew I had a skill set with, with um, athletics. So while I was in prison, I was writing letters to basketball coaches like, hey, oh, you know, I messed up. I need another, you know, I need another chance. And, and you know, some of them responded, some didn't. Um, but I just knew that I had to get right to it. So I just started going on a tour on all of these different programs and incubators. So when I got the call back from Reap, I said, okay, this the one. The business I'm building is Team Pots Gaming. It's a social enterprise, and it's all based around all of the components in gaming to help create pathways for our minority students and minority student athletes. I teach these kids how to build gaming PCs, market them, sell them, um, teach you how to stream the correct way. Just all of the aspects that could help you have a career and a pathway to higher education or to entrepreneurship. REAP has kind of taught me how to develop a business model to sustain this venture and the mission. So that's what I've been spending um, my six, seven, eight months, is focus on how we're gonna make money to sustain. So we have a service, we have a product, you know, and we, we're building a community. In an effort to help identify our value, we want to know if your startup never existed, the world would be worse off because what? 
Um, I put if um, my startup never existed, the world would be worse off because justice involved individuals would continue to struggle with housing injustice because of the lack of resources and opportunities due to their background. I went through the Center for Community Transitions. They connected me to Mr. Refurbisher, which is a second chance employer. The business grew on me. I was new to an automobile detailing company. I saw what they had to offer and I said, you know what, I want to do this too. And so I'm opening up, opening up a franchise, a Mr. Refurbisher Automobile Detailing Franchise. I knew that I wanted to um, be attached with people who want to pour into other people because I see myself doing that. And so it just works for us. The staff with City Startups Lab, um, from the orientation up to everyone I've met now, has just done nothing but want to pour into you, see you succeed and be successful. And so, you know, coming from a background where you're like always side eyeing people to, okay, well, yeah, let me let my guard down, you know, was challenging but rewarding. And that is like one of the reasons after I was reading about what CSL was about, I believe in that. I believe that you should make wherever you are planted better. Through City Startup Lab's Reentry Entrepreneurship Program, they have redefined their futures. Shahida, Taisha, and Stan, and many others like them, have embraced change along with the possibility of starting a new business venture because of REAP. Through their stories, we are reminded that change is not only about personal growth, but also about having a positive impact on their families and society at large. Their imagination, resilience, and drive should be an inspiration to us all.